condemnation. In July and August of this year, the Indonesian government made a great show of withdrawing 1,000 soldiers from the province. The government said at the time that slightly fewer than 12,000 military personnel remained in East Timor. But the actual figure stood at nearly 18,000 armed forced personnel as recently as August, according to confidential Indonesian documents seen by the BBC. The government insists the current figure is much lower, perhaps as low as 3,000. There are also more than 1,000 paramilitary officers in plain clothes under army command. The Indonesian government had previously denied any links with these groups, which have been accused of human rights violations. The correspondent Matt Fry has been to East Timor to gauge the number of troops there. In East Timor, it's wise to trust only in God and virtually no one else. The churches are packed in this far-flung corner of Catholicism that was for centuries a Portuguese colony. But after 23 years of occupation by Indonesia and its military, fear and suspicion are etched on almost every face. The congested cemeteries provide a clue. There's a suspiciously large number of graves dating back to the late 1970s. As a result of the Indonesian invasion, over 200,000 people were killed by soldiers, disease or hunger. One third of the population, a world record. Felicidade is a civil servant, hence the green uniform. Ten of her relatives have been killed by the military. Several were denounced by government spies for supporting independence. But she and her colleagues have now lost their fear. That's why they spoke to us in their office canteen not bothering too much why the stranger with the sunglasses was listening in. Wow, Mana Bisa. <laughs> How could I have talked to you like this six months ago? Impossible. Then they could just arrest you, beat you up, or make you disappear. But now we have to seize the moment to fight for our freedom. It was Felicidade who filmed this recent rally with her video camera. The province's governor had ordered the civil servants to oppose independence, and this was the response. In the past, such a demonstration would have been crushed. But five months after Indonesia toppled its dictator, the Timorese also won change. In July, Indonesia withdrew up to a thousand of its toughest combat troops, a goodwill gesture which the new government had hoped would persuade the Timorese to settle for autonomy rather than independence. The cameras were invited, but for some, it was all too good to be true. The same harbor today, it now seems that new troops have been sent in. We came across this boat, which had just brought 250 special police officers. Later, we saw them on the streets. Policemen with balaclavas and automatic rifles, dressed perhaps to crack down once again. But this student leader told us it was too late to stop the momentum for independence. This is a war. We're talking about the war and the struggle of the, uh, a nation of people. Yeah, if that will happen, that's the risk. Yeah, no war without sacrifice. If the political struggle fails, Asia's most secret guerrilla movement is preparing to continue the military one. Many of these East Timorese rebels have been living in the jungle since the invasion. There are no more than 500 of them. They may look like a ragged bunch, but they've killed thousands of Indonesian soldiers. Now they're poised for new offensives. Five months ago, after the fall of President Sahato, these people here thought that self-determination was finally within their reach. But now it seems that they'll still have to wait a long time. The evidence suggests that the army is building up and not scaling down. And that's because the government in Jakarta fears that if East Timor is allowed to break loose, then other islands in this vast and fragmented country will want to do the same. Matt Fry, BBC News, Dili, East Timor. A short time ago, I spoke to Indonesia's foreign ministry spokesman in Jakarta, Gaffa Fadil. I began by putting it to him that his government is being accused of systematically lying about the number of military personnel in East Timor. Well, I think first of all, I'd like to express my regret that the, you know, that uh, Mr. Ramos Horta has used his earlier opportunity of the interview with the BBC to launch his dirty campaigns against Indonesia with all sorts of allegations. Well. We think it sounds really a desperate person, sir, trying to convince the world of his uh, misconception of the process of democratization taking place in Indonesia, 
including in East Timor. Uh, it is really unfortunate for us that uh, while Indonesia and Portugal are trying to uh, moving forward on the discussions on the uh, contents of the special status of East Timor or, or a wide range of autonomy for that uh, for that uh, territory, he is uh, showing such kind of attitude. But you understand why these criticisms are being made. Only last week, your foreign minister Ali Alatas said that there would be no more combat troops left in the territory of East Timor. Now this week he's saying, well, there may be a few there. So what is you the are case? exactly right, because uh, as far as we know, that uh, there are only 12,000 uh, troops in uh, East Timor, and most of these troops are territorial troops, uh, which uh, are engaged in civic missions, such as building roads, uh, constructing bridges, and in, uh, taking part in development projects in the, in the territory. As far as we know, for the last four months, there has been you know, quiet in, in this area. So uh, we don't see why there are so much allegations about what's going on.